crude inventories rose last week, though gasoline supplies fell again. For more on the oil outlook, let's check in with Stephen Short, president of Short Group. Stephen joins us from Philadelphia. Stephen, welcome back to Bloomberg News. Good to see you. Ah, great to be back, Mark. Thank uh, Steve, you. Uh, Steve, we're still seeing uh, oil over $71 a barrel. What gives? Uh, well, you know what? We're not seeing it above $75, and that is really odd, Mark. Now, mind you, you're talking to a guy who is very bearish on the entire complex, both from a supply standpoint, we have a lot of supply, and from a demand standpoint, we don't have a lot of demand. Be that as it may, this market is in a supreme technical rally, and at this point, I would have thought $75 would have been a slam dunk. And you know what? We got there yesterday. Briefly, we touched it, and now we're about three, four dollars off of that high. Quite telling, I think. Uh, Stephen, uh, crude versus natural gas, the spread's at an all-time high. What's going on? Yeah. Uh, that is turning out to be, I think, the supreme sucker bet of 2009. <laughs> I should know. I tried it in May. It does not work. I don't want to do it again. I don't care how wide that spread gets between crude oil and natural gas. Because what this is telling me, Mark, this spread was wide back in May from a historical standpoint, and it's even wider today. And, and you know Steve, what? I, I should point out and, it could get even wider. And then, Steve, I should point out you're a professional, and you call it a sucker bet. Are you saying you got fooled as well? Oh, ab absolutely, because what we did is we ran the correlations, we ran into the models, we looked at, hey, oil is supremely dear relative to natural gas. I think oil's overdone, so I want to sell oil. I want to buy natural gas. Did not work out, and I don't think that trade's working out now. Mark, what I think this wide differential is telling us is that there is a structural change in the market. So we have to go back to our blackboards now and reevaluate the historical relationship. That old relationship of the past five, ten years doesn't work anymore. Right. Quite frankly, the, the, the market in natural gas has changed. We have a lot of natural gas in the market, both domestically, foreign-wise. We don't have a lot of demand, and that has decoupled. That's been a game changer. Right. And I think these historical wide levels between natural gas and crude oil are here to stay. Well, uh, speaking of uh, historical levels, crude oil, the build of 128,000, this is in, in line with the historical norm, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, they, they, I, actually, today's crude oil was a bit of a head scratcher because we had a very large 8 million barrel uh, drawdown in last week's report. Now, the American Petroleum Institute came out with their numbers last night, and they more or less printed a true up, a correction, if you would, to last week's abnormally large draw. We did not get that today with the DOE numbers, so that's quite odd. Be that as it may, inventories are over 343 million barrels, well above the historical norm. The summer driving season is over. We're about to go into the fall maintenance season, where refineries in the United States will begin to shut down, retool to get ready for the winter. Right. So they don't have a lot of demand for crude oil right now. There is no demand for I mean, demand is limited, so supplies are comfortable. It's the gasoline number today. Historically, <laughs> right. we see a 2.3 million barrel draw. This tends to be one of the biggest draws, if not the biggest draw of the year and we got a 1.7 in its place and it just tells us Americans are not consuming gasoline and, and Stephen we we want to hold you through the commercial break because I have a couple more questions for you Stephen sure. Shork of the short we're back with Stephen Shork of the short group joining us from Philadelphia and we were talking about oil before the break Stephen thanks for staying with us uh, sure. what's going to bring back that gas uh, industrial demand at this point, Mark. Uh, we have over the past year uh, some pretty stark uh, relevations, uh, um, excuse me, in, in this market. For instance, we had a very active hurricane season with Gustav and uh, with hurricanes Gustav Ike last September and October. Did not stem the free fall in natural gas prices. We also had a very cold winter, especially where we needed it in the Northeast and more importantly in Chicago, the largest residential natural gas heating market in the country. And yet we did not see any sort of uh, a retracement in, in prices. Now, I just want to be clear. Historically, uh, and the technical suggests, we are going to see a rally in natural gas between now and the start of the winter. You, you do tend to see a, an increase, but that increase means that we'll see uh, probably natural gas prices upwards of four and a quarter, 450 prior to the winter. But until we see that demand, let me give you st a statistic, Mark. In 2008, U.S. Steel, when they were running 90% of their capacity, burned the equivalent of 1.3 percent, 11,000 NYMEX contracts of the open interest in 2008. Today, U.S. Steel is running at maybe 40, 45 percent of capacity. Therefore, they 
ArcelorMittal, ThyssenKrupp, uh, Nippon Steel. These companies are burning a fraction uh, or running their mills at a fraction of they were just a year and a half ago. That's a lot of demand for natural gas that is not there at the moment. Right. So we will not see a rebound in natural gas, a significant rebound, say back to six, seven dollars, until we see a significant rebound in industrial usage for and, and Stephen, if we might, we have about 30 seconds left. What's all this information mean for homeowners and for those who are driving? Uh, for, uh, now, for homeowners, if you burn natural gas, uh, and if you burn heating oil for that matter, uh, this is going to be a good winter for you. Now, the problem with heating oil is it's a derivative of crude oil, and crude right. oil is a derivative of speculative trading. So if the speculators succeed and get us above 75, and if Wall Street and someone on Wall Street thinks we'll go to 85, that translates into greater than $3 at the pump on a national average. Right. So unless we see that correction in crude oil, gasoline prices have to head higher at this point. Stephen Shork of the Short Group joining us from Philadelphia. Stephen, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for your insight.